This time, folks, we're going to talk about the birth of stars. Um, how actually do you get a star to begin to shine? It starts, as I mentioned last time, with nebula. Um, these clouds of gas and dust that are out in the universe. Something makes those clouds collapse. Now, what exactly is making those clouds collapse? Um, actually, we think it is combination of random density differences and possibly big compression waves. Let me explain. When I say random density differences, if you look at this picture out in this area here, there is not a lot of gas and dust. It's, it's kind of an empty zone. There's not as much there. You look at areas like that and you can tell there's a higher density of matter. Well, gravity works because one atom attracts another atom and they clump together really close. Then they have two times the gravity, so they have a better chance of attracting a third atom. And then once you have one, two, three, that will attract another atom. And slowly over time, as these particles get more and more and more, they end up with more gravity. So more particles equals more gravity. But we also think there's another mechanism at play, and the other mechanism we think is at play is a compression wave. A compression wave, kind of like a, a big gust of wind, if you want to think of it that way. Some sort of big gust of wind has occurred because maybe over in this area a star has exploded, and that compression has pushed the matter in that direction kind of close together. And you can see in this area that you end up a lot with a lot of matter close together. That helps encourage this gravitational attraction. So it's not a, a one or the other, it's a combo of both that we think go into creating stars. But the big mes mechanism is gravity. Gravity is the thing that makes matter clump and attract together. When stars are first born, they create proto-stars. Um, proto means beginning or infant stars. Now these beginning or infant stars are pre-stars. Um, they are maybe just starting fusion, maybe start just starting to create some light. Multiples can exist in one nebula. So one nebula is the birthplace of one cluster of stars. And each one of these protostars, each one of these little globs or conglomerates here, has enough mass to actually produce stars. And I love this picture because it's pretty obvious to see some of these clumps in multiple different wavelengths that are going to end up producing some pretty massive stars. Each has the mass to become an individual star. Each begins to collapse under its own force of gravity. And if you recall, gravity has a tendency to get weaker with distance. So as the gravity gets weaker with distance, um, the stuff that is very close to perhaps this protostar is all going to flow into that one. Um, this area around here, that matter and dust is going to flow into this one. And the stuff in between, if there's enough of it, will create its own protostar, or it will have to choose one star or the other to fall into. Each individual nebula will produce one star cluster, and we talked about these a little bit last time. Um, currently, what we're seeing are only open clusters, meaning there is not a lot of form to these. They're very free form. The stars are scattered hither and thither all over. The other type of star cluster is the globular cluster. We talked about these last time. And globular clusters are very, very pretty. They look kind of like dandelions that are have gone to seed. They're very symmetric. And these are no longer being produced. Today, the only ones that are being produced are open clusters. And as I mentioned, these are freeform from nebula. So how do you go from having a protostar to actually having a solar system? Any rotation or angular momentum that the gas cloud had at its beginning starts to collapse um, and have its momentum conserved. We talked about the ice skater. If you have something that's spinning in a very, very, very big circle and it's spinning very, very slowly, as this starts to collapse down, in the center, it's going to spin very, very fast. And so the initial protostars 
have some sort of spin and rotation, why just random motion of particles, and as they collapse down, they start having this spinning or conservation of angular momentum. Our particular sun rotates about once every 30 days or so, about 25 days to 35 days. And by the time you get to the outer reaches of the solar system, it's spinning very, very slowly. And it may take, Pluto, for example, is 256 years. So it does have a much slower rotation out here. And as we also started to talk about with the uh, ice skaters, when things spin, they have a tendency to flatten out. Another classic example of this is someone who is spinning pizza dough. If you spin pizza dough, it will flatten out to make a big flat disk. It's just the way physics operates and motion operates. Same thing happens with solar system. All right, that will do there. Next time we're going to come back and we're going to talk about fusion and actually how do stars generate light.